Arnold Palmer. He had a terrible tournament for putting. He was just, he was, he was so disappointed and frustrated with himself because he felt like he had a chance to win, but he putted terribly. And he actually said he was going to punish himself. <laughs> so he said, as punishment, I have to hold 1,000 one-foot consecutive putts before the next tournament, which was in three days. So he went to the putting green and he did it, um, 1,000 one-foot putts. And the next tournament, he reckoned, was just about the best putting he ever had. Hey guys, Christo Garcia, my swing evolution. That's my main man, Tom Swanston, all the way from the UK. He's going to travel to the United States next month to co-host my MSC Golf Getaway Weekend. Yes, we're going to have an intensive on Saturday. Tom's going to co-host and work on scoring with everybody. And I'm going to do the full swing. And the following day, we're going to have the first MSC Stroke Play Tournament. It's going to be amazing. Now, this is also going to be affordable. We're going to make it less expensive than it normally is because I want to have a great turnout and want everybody to get a chance to work with Tom and learn the My Swing Evolution Golf Swing. And we're going to have an amazing tournament with tons and tons of games and lots of fun. So this is a nice interview with Tom uh, that I got to do. He's such an interesting guy. We've been friends for four years. He's an MSC alum. He knows everything about My Swing Evolution. He's been my confidant for many, many years. But we're finally going to be able to work together. And this October 13th and 14th, you don't want to miss it. If you want some information, you can email myswingevolution at yahoo.com. And I'll be putting stuff on my website very, very soon with all the details. Cheers. So, Tom, it's so exciting to have you here. We've been friends now for, what, four years? Something like that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wow. So you've watched a lot of My Swing Evolution, and we've traded a lot of ideas about the game. I would love to hear more about your approach to scoring because, you know, I'm, I'm really so close, and I'm playing with the better guys at my club, and uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, a couple few strokes behind them every time. They just, I don't know what it is. They'll, they'll have a bad ball striking day and still shoot even par. How do they do it? Okay, well, um, just to give you a bit of background on my approach to the scoring, as you probably know, a lot of it is down to the short game, right? Um, yes, of course, there is strategy for the long game and how you approach that. But most of us amateurs, we hit more shots near and on the green than we do from the tee to the green. And when I was a youngster, I used to do a lot of short game practice. I was just someone who enjoyed it more than hitting balls on the range. I was a small person, I wasn't strong, and I didn't hit the ball very far, so I, wasn't really, I didn't really care about trying to hit the ball far because I just couldn't do it. I cared about trying to get the ball in the cup. So I used to spend a couple of hours every day in the summer practicing all different kinds of chip and bunker shots and pitches and, and putting round and round the green, trying to beat myself, basically. And I got to a level where I was pretty, I was pretty much pro standard with my short game. I didn't, wasn't really aware of that at the time because I was 14 years old. I was just enjoying what I was doing. Fast forward kind of 20 years, and I'm now thinking about how I can make my golf game better. And I had a lesson with a pro, and there was a real light bulb moment where I wasn't chipping like I wanted to chip. And he said to me, well, was there a time when you were good at chipping? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. When I was 14, 15, I was really hot. I used to expect to get it right by the hole every time. And he said, well, can you remember what you used to do? And I said, yeah. He said, okay, do that. And that was the end of the lesson. And I did do that. I remembered it and I hit it close to the hole every time. So it was a real eye opener for me um, in terms of what is possible with the right kind of thinking. So you, you had the technique, but it was, what did you change? So it was technique. Technique was part of it and focus was part of it as well. So for me specifically, I put the ball further back in my stance, had my hands further forward and did more of a punch shot with my chips. This is, this is my old technique from when I was young and I'd forgotten that. I was trying to do something different. I also wasn't picturing the shot in the same way when I, when I was in my 30s. Um, and I realized that when I was a youngster, I used to do something just, just by practicing so often and so many times you learn to picture the shot and you learn to picture the ball rolling into the hole as opposed to thinking, okay, I've got a kind of five to six foot radius around the hole. I'm trying to get it in. 
Instead, you see the cup and you try and get it in. And that's what I used to do, which is a very instinctive way to play. Like, well, that's the target, hit it. And I used to do that. And Seve used to do that, um, even in, well into his playing career. He always said, if I can see the cup, wherever I am, if I can see the cup, I try and get the ball into the cup. That's my goal. So if I'm 40 yards away, it's got to go in. That is so brilliant. And uh, there's two things I'd like to add. Uh, for folks at home, uh, one of the reasons why Tom and I are friends is because Tom worked on the film Seve. Uh, the, well, what was it called? Heart of a Champion or something? Uh, it's called, it's called Seve the Movie. Um, and it's a docudrama about his life. So we, we have a dramatization of his childhood up until he's 18, 19. And then when he becomes a pro, we intercut that story with real footage of him playing and interviews, etc. If you haven't seen this, guys, it's probably the best golf movie ever made. It's one of the top ones, at least that isn't a comedy. I would put Caddyshack number one, Tin, or Happy Gilmore number two, and then, you know, Tin Cup, those are all comedies, but as far as something that's pretty dramatic and documentary, it's, it's an amazing film. So I highly recommend you see it because it's certainly one of the best. Now, the other thing I want to bring up with Tom is I had a pro golfer, Sam Goulden, my good buddy. Uh, we were playing uh, a par three and he said, what's your goal, Chris? And I said, I want to get it real close to that pin. And Sam said, why not think about getting it in the hole? If it's not on the menu, how are you supposed to order it? Is that yeah. kind of like what you're saying? It's, it's exactly the same. And the other thing about that is that it makes you so much more focused on what you're trying to do. Um, another um, saying or phrase I heard from a pro a long, long time ago was he said, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it. Um, and you have to aim at something. And if you do aim at something, you're pretty likely to get close to it. You might not hit it, but if you aim at a very large area, that's quite hard for your brain to compute. Because if I, if I just put a ball in your hand and say, hit that tree over there, you're very focused and you'll give it a good go and you'll probably hit the tree. But if I say, you know, land it somewhere in the middle of those woods, you'd be surprised how poor you throw the ball. That's, that's really a brilliant thing to hear because I'll see a, a wide fairway and I just make a loose swing and I'll miss it. But yeah. man, when you narrow in on that, you know, tight fairway, why can't I put that swing on a wide fairway? I, I don't know. That really, really makes sense. And, and I, I had a bit of a revelation like that myself. Um, again, um, it was, it was with a lesson with a pro after I'd had a period of playing really poor golf. And he was telling me, were there any good aspects to my game that I was happy about? I, was, I said, well, my recovery play, when I hit myself into a nigh on impossible position, I get it out. And he said, why do you think that is? And I said, because I'm so focused on hitting that little gap between the trees just over the bush. And I do hit it. And he said, there you go, because your focus is so targeted as opposed to just generally trying to hit a 60 watt yard wide fairway. That's fascinating. I thought it was interesting when you were talking about um, your chipping technique, this, this subtle thing that you changed because I've learned that solid is the most important thing regardless of the shot, whether it's a driver or a chip. If you don't hit it solid, you're not going to, you know, a lag putt. That's where I really learned it because I realized my lag putting was terrible because I wasn't hitting it in the sweet spot. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, and for me, I don't even like the term lag putting. I mean, I understand it, but you're on the green. Try and get the ball in the hole. Don't lag it somewhere near. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's like, you know, my gosh, I got to quit lagging it. I got to try and make it. You know, that, yeah. that is so funny. But, uh, but these distinctions, I think that I'm a big believer in the mental side of the game. I don't talk an awful lot about it. But whenever I, you know, try and make a new, like right now, I'm, I'm trying to break to another level and, and it's all here pretty much. That's what the, the yeah. golfers yeah. are telling me. And, and that, that comment you made about a quality strike, that is actually something that the top pros like to really focus on when it's tournament golf, because it's pointless then thinking about swing mechanics and what the crowd's doing and what the score is. Their task is to hit a quality golf shot. 
So if you ask someone like Rory McIlroy, what are you thinking about on in competition? You know, you've, you're driving on the 18th of the 72nd hole and you're in contention. He's saying, I want to make a quality connection with the ball. That's all he's thinking about. Well, um, that's, that's a good thing to zero in on, right? Yeah, exactly. And everything else will, he's had so many years of playing at such a high level that everything else will sort itself out if that is his focus. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is really cool. Can you tell me some of the subjects uh, that you would approach uh, with this scoring clinic that you're going to put on with me? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, it's kind of a mix of how you approach the game mentally and then actual practical techniques that you can use, particularly with the short game, to improve your golf and improve your scoring. So you're probably aware of this. Um, that the biggest inhibitor probably for all of us as golfers is fear or anxiety. So that's a fear of making a mistake. And that, that mistake could be compounded by further fears. Like if I make this mistake, I lose the competition or I lose the hole or I embarrass myself, whatever it is, or there's a whole myriad of things that we conjure up in our brain. And so I would talk about the kind of things that trigger our fears and the kind of ways that we can get around those fears because they're there. And even the top golfers in the world have them. They become fearful. You know, we've seen the, the best guys in the world going down the final stretch and choking, making mistakes they wouldn't normally make because they're fearful of making those mistakes. So we will talk about those things because we all have them as golfers, even just in a friendly game, nine holes with friends. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about how to handle that in a number of different ways so that you can you can both understand what's going on with yourself and then develop techniques that you'll practice over time where you'll get better and better at handling that pressure that you put on yourself so that you can, so you can do better. That um, sounds great. I, I could definitely use some of that. Yeah. Um, one of the other things we'll talk about is statistics. So statistics are not for everyone um, and writing things down is not for everyone. But it, it, even if it isn't, it is good to understand what those statistics are and what they signify. So the reason that it's good is that it's a very good measure of where your game is at. And in terms of the statistics that we have access to in the golf world, really all we have is the top pros because they keep statistics of those on a regular basis. And then the stats we keep for ourselves. We don't really have anything else. I can't tell you what the average amateur stats are. Um, nobody really knows. So, because they're not particularly recorded, but um, top pros are, and then you can record your own. And actually having that comparison is really good because, you know, I'm however many shots worse than a top pro in a round of golf. So I've actually got something I can gauge against there. Um, just to give you an example, um, one of the other problems that we all have as golfers is manage our expectations. So, it's all very well um, standing on a tee and saying, I'm going to hit a 300 yard drive when the longest drive you've ever hit is 270, right? Your, your expectations are off. Or you're saying, right, I'm going to get four, five straight pars in a row when your record is two or three in a row. Okay, we're all doing those kinds of things all the time, trying to hit a shot we can't, we've never hit before. Now, it's not to say you can't do it, but if you're putting that pressure on yourself constantly, you wear yourself down, you put pressure, you make a 10 swing, et cetera. Whereas when you understand statistically where your golf is, you manage your goals to be really specific. Say, I've done this before a hundred times. I can do it again, especially under pressure. And just to give you an example of how off our, we can be with our stats. If I said to you, Christo, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of balls. I'm going to give you 20 balls and you're going to chip from 20 to 30 yards uh, to a pin that's in the middle of the green. And how many of those do you expect to get up and down from 20 to 30 yards out of 20 balls? Uh, I would say, I, you know, probably, you with your 45, probably 40 to 50 percent. 40 to 50 percent. Okay, that's fine. And that's, that's a, a perfectly normal response for someone at your standard of golf, right? However, I can tell you, the top players in the world, the top 100 players, on average, that group gets up and down from that distance 50% of the time. 
Wow. Well, you know, I was just thinking that I know that it's not, it'd be less than 50%, but I'm surprised I would have thought they'd be around 60 to 70%. Mm. That's not the case. And the top, the top, top guys are like the top 10 guys in that category, but you average across the top 100 players and yeah, it's 50%. You know what blew my mind is the average scratch golfer hits at 250 yards off the tee. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you can be a five handicap golfer without being able to hit the ball 200 yards. Wow. Wow. You know, this is a, this is a really interesting conversation. I, you know, just so you guys know, Tom and I will talk for hours at a time <laughs> about golf. We're just such geeks about it. But, yeah. uh, but wow, I, I just realized in talking to you that the first, when I first started my swing evolution, I made my massive improvement at the beginning. Like I cut about nine strokes off my game, you know, the first year I was keeping my stats and I just quit. I don't even know what I do now. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, it's so important because it's not just about a gauge where you are generally, it helps you focus on what you need to work on because your weak points stand out very quickly when you start keeping stats over a period of time. And the more stats you can keep and the more accurate and detailed they are, the better. And that's what the pros rely on so much these days. So they finish a tournament and a load of them will sit down with their coaches and say, okay, well, how did I perform in all the different areas? What do I need to work on? And Lee Westwood had an interesting um, experience, maybe about two years ago. And everyone said, you know, Lee is such a great ball striker. He's fantastic. And he just doesn't win enough tournaments because his putting is weak. Okay, his putting wasn't the best for sure. He got a new um, coach. I think it might, it might have been a short game coach. I'm not sure. And so the short game coach looked at his stats and he said, okay, right, we're off to the range. And like, yeah, but Lee's going, like, my, my, my putting's the issue. And he goes, no, it's not. From 100 to 150 yards, you're not hitting the ball close enough. You're putting too much pressure on your putting. That's the problem. What? And Lee didn't realize it. <laughs> I, I would have never guessed that. I, yeah. You know. Yeah, great ball striking in terms of quality of ball striking from a little bit further. But when he gets closer, it's more kind of wedge distance. He wasn't hitting it close enough relative to the other top pros. Did you see uh, what Dustin Johnson did in the last couple of years with his wedge game? Yeah. That brought him to one, number one in the world. And he's ranked two in the world wedge game now. What? Yeah. You can't give that to a guy who hits at 360. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's why he got to, but, and not just world number one, but he was world number one by a large margin because of that difference in his game, just wedge play. Wow. That is, that is so cool. So is there anything else you can tell us about what you're going to be showing us at the MSC weekend? Um, let me just have a look. Yeah, well, we're going to go through some interesting uh, putting drills and things you can think about and specific practice drills and going in line with the, um, the, the combating fear. We're going to talk about how you can build your confidence, which is a really important part of the game as well. It's not just about overcoming fear. The more you can build your confidence up, the more successful you will be in all different situations because you know you can perform. And that's the key. It, almost any golfer, I can say, have you hold a 20 foot putt? Yes. Have you hit a good drive? Yes. Have you hit a wedge close? You've done it all before. Okay, well, guess what? Let's work out how you can repeat it lots of times, whatever the scenario. Right, right. I've been talking with my students lately about, uh, I've got, you know, one particular student who's a good golfer, 70s shooter. And uh, he's more around the, the upper 70s. But I'm telling him that we've got to change his mindset. He's got to begin to see himself as that, you know, par and breaking par shooter. He's good enough to do it. You know, but I told yeah, him it's absolutely. largely going to be your mindset. And it, it is. And, and the mind it definitely is the most powerful tool in golf. I mean, it's the most destructive as well. We, we're always knocking <laughs> ourselves over with it. But, um, and golf really is a game against yourself. Um, so if you can build your confidence and understand how you work, then you've got, a, you've got an advantage over everyone else. One of the, my favorite stories of golf ever is when Hogan won the U.S. Open. And he hit something like a one or a two iron with a fade into a difficult pin position on the final green. And everyone said, how did you pull off that shot at that moment? And he said, it wasn't that shot at that moment for me. That's not how I saw it. 
I'd hit that shot with a one iron, with a fade, a thousand times, more than that, 10,000 times. So I just stood up and did the thing I'd done 10,000 times before. I didn't think of what was going on or what the possible results were. So I've been uh, working with a lot of my students on these impact drills, just half swings with a wedge, um, talking about getting good, solid compression. And yeah. you know, really, and I say every time you warm up, I want you hitting 20 to 30 of these just, just to get that solid feeling of compression. Yeah. And, and every time you do it, it's like changing the piggy bank. You don't, you don't want to reach for a three iron and you miss the first half a dozen shots and then your brain is going crazy. Absolutely. And, and the, the money in the account is a really important aspect is the money in the, the, think of the money as confidence. So when you hold a putt or you hit a good shot, you put a dollar of confidence into your account. When mm -hmm. you shank a shot or you miss a putt, you take a dollar out. So if you go to the range and you hit five shanks and then you go to the putting green and miss five 10 foot putts, guess what? You're overdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> that is just fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't wait till you get out here in a month. We're going to have a great time. And I hope that all of you guys are going to come out to the MSC golf weekend getaway. We're going to have an absolute blast. So Tom, thank you so much. And uh, we'll pleasure. Uh, checking in over the next month and I'll keep you guys up to date about everything that's happening out here at Eaton Canyon. We are going to have a blast. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at myswingevolution at yahoo.com and we'll get you set up for the MSC Golf Weekend Getaway. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Christo. But you know what? I didn't have any fundamentals to go back and rely on. Everybody's going to have it today. Michelangelo said, I saw the angel in the stone and I carved until I set it free. This is what we must do with our golf swings. Not everybody is born with a great natural golf swing. And if you're not born with that, then you have to build it. There is a process that you can go through to rebuild a golf swing so you've got something that works, that is dependable and consistent. But it's not gonna happen if you keep buying different golf clubs and hoping that the club is going to fix your game. It's never gonna happen for you. Do yourself a favor, become a part of my swing evolution and learn how to swing a golf club properly. Don't miss the next MSC Intensive and Tournament October 13th and 14th. You can email myswingevolution at yahoo.com for details.